Good evening everyone. Welcome to our online chess lesson for Thursday the 15th of November. This is Robert Jamison and thank you uh, last week to Tim for filling in for me while I was up in Mildura. I had an interesting time up there trying to play tennis and I gave a talk to the chess club on the Friday night and they had a uh, weekend tournament on the weekend with uh, William uh, went up there to play as did Max. Max did pretty well and of course all the Mildura people like uh, Zoe and Liam played as well, so that was good. Well done guys. Now, today I have with me Michael Gershenzon. Hello Michael. Hello. This is your second time here, isn't it? You've been here once before? Yes. All right, so you should know all the ropes. Now, um, we've got a little pawn in game puzzle there to start off with. So did you work out whether you reckon it's a win or a draw or what's happening? I reckon black's going to win because of h3. Okay, so what first move would you play for white, do you think? King to h2. King to h2, all right. So I play h3, for instance. What would you do then? King to g1. Okay, I'll play g3. King to... F1 or H1? F1. F1, all right. I'm going to play there. King to G1. My pawns are looking pretty good here. I'll give you a check. Do you want to go in the corner? Yep. All right, I'll come up here. I'll go to King G2. All right, and then I'm getting a queen. Take the queen. When you take me, I'm getting another queen. I win! Uh-huh. But did we play the best, I wonder? So this is an interesting little position because black's king can't move. If black were to move his king, our pawn would get through. Or if he goes the other way, our other pawn gets through. So it's a question of whether white can stop or gobble those pawns or whether the pawns get through. I'm not sure many people came up with the right answer. Uh, Bobby thought it was a draw. Sam thought it was a win for white. But he didn't tell me the winning move. Uh, maybe I'll ask him. Are you there, Sam? Yeah. You reckon it's a win for white? Yeah. What's the winning move then? Uh, I'm not too sure. I think King G1. King G1. Very good. Well done. Thank you, Sam. All right. The winning move, so put this in your memory bank, is King G1. All right. Then no matter what black does, say he pushes the pawn, we can come up here. If he pushes this pawn, we come up here. Now, poor old black's pawns are stymied. So if he moves the pawn, we just take it. Moves up here, we block him. Comes here, we come here. And so he's going to have to end up moving his king, and we win. What about before? Uh, what about before? Uh, so what do you want to do for black? Um, same thing. So no, the C one, all right. Okay, I'll play here. What do you want to do now? And then the same thing. G3 no. check, but then I'll take here. No, the other one. The one that you did. Same move that you did. So here, here, here. Check. So what do you want to do? No, that's You want to do H3? Yeah, I play here. What can yeah, you do now? Check. Now pull it up. I just take. Then, oh yeah. Yep, see? So it's a win for white. But the only winning move is that really clever move of king to g1. So put that in your memory bank. You might get that in a real game one day. All right, now let's go back and see if we can load one of your games to have a look at. Um, we'll have a look at this one, I think. Fairly short one. Um, now, I think there were three of your games online that I had a look at, and you don't generally make huge boo-boos, but you make quite a few sort of little boo-boos of so choosing the second best move. So we'll have a look through your game and see what we can learn. So this was um, your black against Brendan. Okay, so off we go. It's an elephant Sicilian. And you're sort of converting it into a French defence. Okay, what move do you think black should play here? Um, I'm not too sure. Maybe bishop b4 So you look, you're looking at bishop b4 check? Why do, why do you want to give a check with the bishop? 
Well, invest opening stuff, I'd pretty, it's a pretty good move. To give a check? No, to give that check on. Okay. Do you want to swap your bishop off for another piece? Or not? Yeah. You do. Is that your good bishop or your bad bishop? Um, uh, what, what, see your centre pawns there, not that one. Those, those pawns are on white squares, so the bishop's on black squares. So that's your good bishop. So you probably don't want to swap off the good bishop. So that wouldn't be the best move. Um, we need some help here, guys. Do you want to type in on questions what you think black should play in this position? It's a fairly standard French defence sort of position. Sam suggesting queen b6. Heath's agreeing. Daniel Pobbs going g6. Either of those two appeal to you? Um, I think queen b6. What, why is queen b6 a good move? Well, it's getting more pressure on that pawn. Yeah, see, if you have a look at White's pawn chain, the base of the pawn chain, that is the pawn that can't be protected by any other pawns, is d4. So your aim should be to attack that base, try and undermine it and put pressure on it. So queen b6 over here would probably be the the go. Anyways, uh, back to the game. I think you went for f6. He went for the pin. All right, what should you do about that pin? Is that a good pin or a bad pin or what? Um, it's not that bad. Are you worried about him taking a knight? Would that be good for you or good for him? Um, I reckon it's going to be... Um, it's sort of... Um, might be good for both of us because his two pawns are blocking that bishop and um, the knight, but the knight is putting, still putting pressure on that pawn. So swapping the bishop for the knight would be good for both sides, you think? Yeah. Okay, so for instance, if you played a6 and he took, you took, what do, what do you think about that? Um, I can still be for that. Okay, I'll, I'll be pretty happy with this for black. Yeah. Because once again, uh, have a look at the pawns. His pawns in the centre, they're on black squares. And his bishop's on black squares. So he's lost his good bishop. So this other bishop is a bit limited in what it can do. So getting rid of his good bishop would be cool. And your pawn um, has gone from b7 to c6. So it's moved towards the centre. So it's like improved the position of that pawn. Um, so were it me, I think I would have called his bluff and just said a6 and chase him away. You, you decided to unpin him. He moved the knight. Now you pinned again. Good pin or bad pin? Bad pin. Bad pin, based on what we've just been talking about, because that's your good bishop. You don't want to really take <coughs> that knight if you can help it. So he, he did the same sort of thing. Now you're getting the hang of it. So your queen's coming out, putting pressure on that d4 square on the base of his pawn chain. And you're sort of threatening his bishop a little bit. So he retreated the bishop. That was a bad move. That looks a bit dodgy because you're, you're in there with a free pawn, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so cool. We want a free centre pawn. So things are looking great. Uh, now he pinned us. All right, so this is a bit interesting. So he's got a pin on our knight on d4. What, what should we do? Um, you could still take on F3 because it's a check. Okay, so one option would be to take on F3 with check. Would he take back with the queen or with the pawn, do you think? Back with the queen. You're going to take back with the queen? All right, is there any other move you'd want to do or you're pretty well forced to, to take on F3? He's got a double attack on your knight um, on D4. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, let's have a look. Let's say you took. He took with the queen. Would that be good for him or good good for you? I reckon it's good for both sides because he can now, do a queen a five. Queen h five. Queen a five. Oh, okay. So he's attacking your queen. You haven't got a really good move in this position. Um, no, not really. Okay, we need some help, guys, on the questions. Can you type in a good move for black here? If you were black, what would you play? 
He's gone bishop c5. Anyone else see a better, even better move for black? Benji wants to take the knight on c3 and Heath, yes. Can't, can't black just play pawn there? Doesn't that win a piece? You've got double attack? Oh, yeah. See, so you're attacking the bishop and you're attacking the knight? Yeah. So I reckon you're going close to winning a, a piece there. Now, he might give you an annoying check or something. He might he might be able to come here check and... But, I mean, a piece is a piece. A piece is a piece. So, knight f3 would have been, been good. You missed your chance there. You took his knight. Now, hang on. Why should, why should we take that knight? Tell me about that. Um, Can't remember why he did it? No. Do you reckon it's a good move or a bad move? Awful. Awful. I agree. So why is it awful? Because the pawn just takes back and knight can't move because it's pinned. Unless it takes with check. Yeah. yeah, but again, is the knight going anywhere? Like, can't get out of the pin, can it? So there's no need to take it now. If you have to take it, you can take it later. Yeah. And you're giving up your good bishop again. So bishop takes knight. That was sort of a, probably a bad decision. But you can get out of losing the piece by giving him a check. He gets out. So you've lost your control of the black squares now a bit. Queen there. Okay. So is C C six good, or is there anywhere else you'd want to have a look at? Putting Maybe it? Queen B two. Yeah, I think Queen B two. Because then you've got a double attack. Uh, you're on this pawn and the rook. Uh, so that sort of saves time. And you might end up picking up a pawn. Also, he's got to worry about whether this pawn's on pre, maybe. So he can do a check on h5 if you take it straight away. So probably queen b2 would be best. So he went there. So he's still threatening a c pawn. But now his bishop's in a nice spot in the middle of the board. Okay, and he's got an attack going on f6, so you blocked him. He went here. All right, what do you think black should do now? Um, Any moves appeal? No. All right, so the first thing we say is what is he threatening? So is he threatening anything? Not really. Not really. He could... He could play bishop there, but we just move our queen and it's a swap off and we get rid of our bad bishop, so that's not really a threat. All right, so he's not threatening anything, so it's still in the opening. So we're trying to do things like seize the centre, castle, develop our pieces. So we've seized the centre. What haven't we done then? Castle. We haven't castled. So what are we going to do to castle? We need to move something, don't we? No. You're going to castle no. queen side? No. We're going to castle king side? Um... Knight. Yeah, so the obvious move may be knight e7, developing a piece, getting rid of the castle, and your position is all, all pretty nice. So that would have been cool, but you did that. Any, any idea why you did that? Um, I think it was to um, be able to move my queen out of that spot um, into a better position um, because it was... So you didn't want the B-pawn to be unprotected, you're saying? Yeah, I think. Yeah, all right. So that's a reason, <coughs> but it's probably not a good reason. So you've been distracted from what you should be doing, like castling, developing your pieces. You've been distracted about thinking, what if I want to move my queen somewhere else later? Okay, so a little mistake. So he comes up here. So what should you do now? He might be going to have a trade on D5, perhaps. Um, I, um, I don't think he, I don't think he should take it because, um, the queen just takes, mm -hmm. c, c, takes c6 and then you want the pawn back and the bishop's in a better position. Okay, so what would you do instead? Um. Remember what we're trying to do? What are we trying to do? Castle. Castle and develop our pieces. Castle. So what about, what about this move again? Wouldn't that be cool? So then, like, if yeah. he takes us, maybe a knight can come out on that really good square there. Yeah. So that looks pretty good. 
Okay, but you got distracted again, I think, and you ran away. Don't understand that one. So he took us. Okay. What should we take with the pawn or the queen? I reckon both's bad because if you take with the queen, the queen takes back and then. So you don't want to swap um, queens. A6 mm -hmm. um, with bishop h7. Yep, so that's what happened in the game, wasn't it? Yeah. What about if you take with the pawn? Would that be any good? Um, it's the same thing happens. Okay, so the same tricky thing happens, but there's a difference here. So you may, maybe our queen is protecting this pawn over here. Oh, yeah. So the bishop can in fact take it, and we're, we're not in a huge amount of trouble maybe. All right, so, so you possibly made the wrong choice. You took with the queen, and he went chop, chop, then he hits you with a tactic. Ouch! So he's got a double attack. Yeah. All right. So guys, let's pretend we're black. We're in a pickle. He just played a good double attack on us. So we've got to try and think of getting the best way out of it we can. So what should Michael play as black to get the best possible result, even though he's probably going to lose material? So type in the question, what do you think black should play here? Bobby says his screen is playing up. He's saying 97. Come on, we need some other suggestions. The bishop's attacked and the g-pawn's attacked. Daniel wants to play bishop takes e6. Evan likes knight f6. Bobby likes knight f6. The man likes knight f6. He's like h6. Daniel's changed his mind. All right, Michael, any of them appeal to you? What, what do you think? I reckon knight f6 is the best one. Okay, why do you choose knight f6? Because you might lose the bishop, but you won't lose the rook. Y yes. Okay, but probably, probably, even better would be knight here to keep the pieces on. So he takes your bishop, you take back. So you've got uh, two pawns, and if he takes this pawn, what can you do then? Um, rook attacking the bishop. We'll rook attack the bishop, and when he moves his bishop, we can probably snaffle another pawn down here, so we're, we're getting rid of some of the pawns. So we've possibly got some drawing chances there in the game. So you made the wrong choice in the game. So he's got in there snaffling a rook. D4, what's D4? Tell me about that. Um, Do you want to get the bishop going for the attack on his pawn here or something? Is that I the... reckon I might have, might have wanted to um, trap the bishop. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it there. Yeah, it's d4. You just put in the form where his bishop's going to take it. So it looks a little bit funny. All right, let's see what happens. So he takes. You took. Yeah. Rook snaffles up there. You went there trying to trick him and get a back rank check and get that rook in the corner. But he saw that and got out of it comfortably. Then you have to move the bishop. Then he took the pawn. So you move your knight. So what have we got here? We're uh, just sort of a rook down for a pawn. That's pretty terrible. Uh, rook there. Rook d8. What? Rook d8. Why is there rook going to d8? Um, to take on the um, get the ah, ship. Ah, okay. So you, you're going for a sneaky attack where you want to sacrifice here and then your rook come down here maybe. All right, okay, it's possible. Only trouble is, resigned. Uh, you might have played on, but the score sheet says resigned or something. But yeah, I did. You resigned, okay, but because he, he can just, um, he can probably just play here or something, yeah. and then swap off pieces, and it's pretty terrible. All right, so now what can we learn from that? You've basically lost because of that tactic where you got your rook, and you made yeah. the wrong choice. So um, that was the biggest blunder. What what else did we do we do? Um, learn before you um, look before you move. Look before you move. You made a few literal blunders, sort of um, 
with your queen going to the wrong square or uh, you've missed that chance to play knight f3 check and d4 maybe would have won a piece. Um, so maybe you're not looking at enough candidate moves when it's your turn. So have a look around at a few other moves um, and you might be able to pick up those better moves. Alright, so that was a quick little game. Now we have a humongously long game okay. against Daniel Pobb. So we might get Daniel to say something too if we see anything interesting in this game. All right, so you're white this time. So let's have a look. Here we go. Uh, so French defence again. Exchange. C4. Tell me about C4. Well, I usually play that move because if he takes, you get the bishop de developed. And you recapture with got, developing move, yep. And you've got all the centre. And, like, I reckon getting those two pawns side by side. Yeah, gen generally two pawns side by side is good. Here I'm, I'm not quite so sure, because um, he might not take. He might sort of defend or something. And eventually when you move your bishop, maybe then he takes. And now you've got, um, you've got this isolated pawn. So you've got more space, so it's sort of got pros and cons. Um, anyway, a little bit unusual, but not too bad. So we'll plot on. Oh, check. Is that a good check? Um, I'm not sure. I'm Is it similar that. to what we just talked about? When, remember when you checked in the last game? Was that a good check or a bad check last game? Bad check. That was a bad check because it was our good bishop. <laughs> so is this, is this Daniel's good bishop or his bad bishop? Um... What, what, what colour square is his, his pawn chain on? So his, his pawns are on white. white. So this is probably going to be his better bishop. So that's probably a bad check. Bishop there, okay. You went there. Yeah, he just took the pawn now. Okay, so why did, why did you go there? You didn't like the pin? Yeah. What's scary, what's scary about the pin? Um, I just don't like pins because I don't like it when the knights get to. Okay, um, so you're you're worried about his knight coming out here and then jumping in here, and yeah. then he's got double attack there. Yeah. All right. Well, I think you sort of cross that bridge when you get to it, because at the moment, I mean, he's not going to take you. That wouldn't be the best for him. So if he does attack your knight again, you can just defend it with your queen or your bishop or your other knight or something. Or if you want, you can break the pin with a3. So breaking the pin there, probably not the best. And he's gobbled a free pawn on you. Yeah. Okay, so we're giving him a pawn start. And then you moved again. Oh, that's a bit naughty, isn't it? Moving a piece twice in the opening like that. And so maybe knight f3 would be better or... Um, yeah. Something like that. All right, so we're we're a bit behind the eight ball here. Oh, good move, bad move. Um, bad move. Bad move. Okay, he's taken you when he doesn't have to, and he's given up control of the black squares. So now our bishop, if we get it out, could be a good bishop. At the moment, it's just a big pawn. And queen to and, a4. And yet now, yes, as you say, you've now got queen to a four check coming up and then you'll have a double attack and you may get your pawn back. Hopefully. We'll see how we go. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. All right. We'll wait and have a look. So he developed his knight. We developed our knight. Um, should you do that or maybe queen a4 straight away to try and get the pawn back? Maybe. Not sure. Anyway. What about here? What should you do here? Um, maybe queen c2. c2. What about, what about knight here? Try and get that pawn back. Or, or, uh, or you could even maybe put your rook here first. Put a bit of pressure on that file there, knight there. We'll try and get your pawn back. Yep. Okay. Anyway, we're, we're plotting on. Pawn down. He's after our pawn. We've defended it. Oh, he's got a good bishop there now. 
Whoops. What's going on there? What do you think about that? I think the fort would have been a good um good move to take there because you wouldn't back the knife. Yeah, but you he so sure so that. here he had a threat. So <coughs> so here he's he's threatening maybe knight here, and then your bishop can come in and get this his bishop can come in and get this one. All right, but you covered that threat. So then he's ran away. Very strange. All right. So he's naughty too. He's moved the piece twice in the opening. So he would have been better off leaving it up there probably. Okay. Castles. Castles. So everything's going right except we're a pawn down. Okay. Bishop there. Mm. Why do we want to play bishop there? To bend the knight. Is it a good pin or a bad pin? Bad pin. So, like, what if he just says, go away? What are you going to do? Are you going to take him or not? H4. H4? Oh, no, 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 no. Losing take a bishop. Him, take him. You're going to take him? Yes. Is this good or bad? Um, Haven't you given him two free moves? Bad. He's, he's got this pawn on H6 now he didn't have before, and his queen's developed. So you've given him, like, two free moves. So maybe it's not a good pin. I think pinning is very hard for juniors to understand. Uh, a lot of people, like Daniel, your opponent, he likes swapping pieces. Um, but there's no point pinning if you're not going to take him or if he can break the pin. So a little bit of a boo-boo maybe. Anyway, he didn't play h6. So we're going for an exchange of rooks maybe. Not to be in the open file. Uh, yep. He, well, we're both sharing the open file now. He's unpinned. So that looks all right. Your knight's going over there. So what, what's your plan here? To go to f5. Okay, so you've spotted a, a lovely spot for your knight. So if you get your knight in there, yeah, maybe you've got a bit of an attack going with yeah. the knight, the bishop, the queen, all getting up there. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see what he does. Swap, swap. Swap, swap. Ah, now he's got a sneaky move. He's trying to win your piece with his check. But fortunately, you can go back again. So no damage done. So how are you going here? Um, um, I think I'm doing well apart from the... Being a pawn board. down. Your pieces are reasonable. Um, but I mean, black's pieces are pretty good as well. Uh, so it's a little bit better for black, probably. Okay, so he's oh, he wants to swap off some more. Um, I have to swap it off because if he takes, I can't take back. Yeah, that pins are pains. So you have to swap. All right. And now you've hit his knight. All right. Um, let me see. What do people think black should do here? So type in on the question, what move you'd make for Daniel if you were black? Black to play. Well, it's obviously threatening queen takes knight mate, so he has to do something about it. So Heath likes knight d6, Sam and Benji like knight f6. Anyone else want to have a go? Benji's Roman likes knight d6. Thomas likes knight f6. All right, let's um. Let's Unmuted. You there, Ryan? Yep. Oh, we can't hear you coming. Oh, that's better. All right. Did, what would you do for black? What's your choice? Well, I think knight, knight d6 is okay. Knight d6 you like, do you? Yeah. Okay, why is that better than f6? Because if f6, the bishop can take and double his pawns. Yep, all right, that sounds pretty good. All right, thank you very much, Ryan. You did. All right, so what do you think? Do you agree with Ryan, or you want to do something different? Um, yeah, I agree with Ryan. Yeah, so probably... Knight d6 would be pretty okay. 
you're not going to get on the back rank. You could even maybe play king, Daniel could play king there. Uh, bishop can't, oh, bishop no. can't go on the check because it's got a cover. And the next move we chase the bishop away. And now king's in a slightly better spot. Knight here, for all of those you want to go there, that wouldn't be so hot because you then get your pawns doubled. You've still got that annoying pin, but you've, you've doubled up your pawns. All right, so anyway, in the game, Daniel came up with a move that no one else thought of. Queenie, what do you think of that? The surprise move? Um, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise to me, but good, I don't... Good I don't, move, bad move? I don't think it was a bad move because um, you should trade off pieces when you're yeah. up. So if he if you swap queens, that'd be okay for him because he's a pawn ahead. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you, I think you chickened out, didn't you? Didn't swap queens. Yeah. You ran away over there. Now he played there, attacking the bishop. Bishop dropped back. Yeah, uh, that drops it. Um. And then Daniel played there. Oh. Just that's interesting. All right. Is that a good move or a bad move, I wonder? Uh, all right. Let's ask people what they think. Knight f6. Type in either good or bad. If you like it, type in good move. If you don't like it, type in bad move. We'll see what people think. Should Daniel play knight f6 here? Evan's gone bad, Haran's gone bad, Roman's gone bad, Peace gone bad. It's like the baddies are having it. Anyone think it's good? Okay. Okay. No. Oh, Sam's saying it's good. Yavin has said bad question mark. Oh, Sam's changed his mind. So most people are saying it's bad. So what, what did you think, Kim Michael? Was it bad or good? It's a bad move because you can take on C7. So just win a free pawn? Yeah. Okay. So you're sitting here thinking, oh goody, my opponent's made a bad move, I can win a free pawn? Yeah. Okay, and your brain stops there? Is that the end of the thought process or, uh, or what? I think it was. Alright, so you're sitting here, you're thinking, my move, Aha, bishop takes pawn. Yep, I'm doing that. Yeah. You didn't sort of stop and check it and look for sneaky replies you hadn't thought of or whether there's a better move well, I or... Looked, I looked if there was... Um, you couldn't see a better move? Well, what about sneaky replies for him? Um, I couldn't see. Couldn't see anything? All right. Because in theory you should stop and, and check your moves just in case it's a trap. It might not be a blunder, it could be a trap. So let's have a look. So you took, and then Daniel put his knight there, which I quite like, because that is a very good square for the knight. And I'm sitting wondering where your bishop's <coughs> going to go to. <coughs> so where, where's the bishop going to go, do you think? E5. E5. So, like, it can't go to... Um, what would happen if it went to f4? So um, what would you do then? Take there. You take, and if he take, back. He takes back. What happens then? The king file is all open. Worse than that? There's something worse oh, than a happening. The knights. Yes. Yeah. Queen check would win the knight. What? Well, so that would be cool. So basically, you can't put your bishop back on f4, so the bishop has to go to e5. All right. What should Daniel do now? Um, Type in on the question, guys. What do you think Daniel should do here? What would be a good move for Daniel? Black to play. He, so he's lost his extra pawn. But he's still got nice pieces in the middle, but um, Michael's pieces aren't too bad either. So suggestions for black. Evan's gone F6. Sam's gone F6. Roman's gone F6. Sean's gone F6. Pete's gone F6. Looks like they like F6. Yeah. You, you scared of that? Yep. So what would happen? Let's have a look. 
So F6. if he played F6, what would you do? I have to go back to... You have to go back here. Yeah, and then... And then it's the same horrible thing. And we're losing a piece. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, is this true? We're 100% certain. So let's just do what I said before. We've got to check it. So we're saying he's going to play F6. Then I'm in a pickle. You're saying my my only move is bishop f4, but if I do that, I'm going to lose a piece. Um, so we, we need to think really hard. Maybe there's a way we can get out of it. So can we do anything to get out of it? Or we've got to give up our bishop for a pawn, maybe? I think... Um, Have you seen anything you could do to get out of it? No. Daniel Pobb. Well done, Daniel. Now, what is your game? You could play there. That's what I was thinking of. Ah, and then, then we'd probably go here, swaps, swaps, bishop runs away, and then Daniel could take this pawn. So it'd still be a pawn up anyway, but you wouldn't lose a piece. But anyway, in the game, Daniel didn't do that. He took it easy on you. Swap, swap, and then he chased your knight away from that good spot. Oh, hang on, that pawn on C four is unprotected. So it looks like Daniel might have made a, a boo-boo here. Uh, so what do you guys think? Should should Michael rip in and play knight c4 and get his pawn back or, or not? What would you do if you were Michael in this position? Looks like Daniel might have made a boo-boo and blundered the pawn back. So some people are suggesting queen g6. Should Michael take that pawn? I think we've got everyone baffled because we're not getting many results on the questions. In the game, I think you took it, didn't you? Yep. Okay, we've got them all baffled, so let's let's see what happens. So, <coughs> did you ask yourself what's he going to reply? We just said free pawn, you beauty. Well, he might do. If he, did that. He, he could do a, a discovered thing with his knight, like here, say, takes, and then he takes, and then we've got a queen and pawn in him. Mm. Okay, so that's one possibility. So that's the only thing you looked at? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That's All right. Well, black has a really good move here. See who can be first to tell me what it is on the question. Find a really good move for black, please. Sam's gone knight b4. No, that would lose a piece to pawn takes knight. Thomas has gone knight e3 check. Would lose a piece to knight takes knight. Daniel's gone knight b4, loses a piece of what? No one's seen the really good move yet? Come on, folks. Someone out there must see it. I'll check with Ryan just in case he's awake. Unmuted. Ryan, can you see a really good move for black? Not yet. I'm still thinking. Okay, it's sort of one move deep, so hang in there. Muted. Well, we need to black to move something that's got a, a really good threat. Ah, Heath. Well done, Heath. Excellent. So what happens after queen here? Ouch. Because that's threatening discovered attack oh. on the king and it's a double attack on the knight. Oh. So that would be an awesome move that would probably at least win the knight. So, oh. so you see, that's another example where you've really got to check your moves and make certain he hasn't got a surprise reply. Fortunately for us, Daniel went back and checked it out. You went d2. Maybe, I mean, probably knight e3 would be a better square. You went d2. All right, so Daniel gives you a check. You block it. And he gets the knight going. So it's, you're still a pawn ahead. And you're trying to swap off the queen, so that's the right thing. Um, Daniel runs over there, a bit risky, because the b7 pawn's attacked. So you gobble it, so you're two pawns ahead. Yeah. Uh, all right, so here we are. So you're sitting here, you're thinking, oh, goody, I can win another free pawn. Mm -hmm. Queen takes pawn. 
Did you ask yourself what's he going to reply? Has he got any good replies? Uh, I don't think I did with this one. You don't think you did? All right, let's let's do it now. So let's uh, so in our brain we're thinking, okay, I'm going to gobble this pawn. So what what's he going to reply? Maybe knight g5. That's not threatening anything. This pawn's on f3 is covered. Yeah, what else H, could he do? H3. Let's um let's rip it in. Hang on. So let's say we take the pawn, find me a really threatening move for black. Um, check. No. I'm not sure. He could play here, like pinning a knight, but we're, we're lucky because we can do a counter check and get his knight. Then he wins a pawn. Uh, a pawn. Yeah, but we're two pawns ahead now. So we're not losing a piece, but it's sort of a nip and tuck. You've got to just be a little bit careful and check it. Anyway, Daniel wanted to bring in his knight, so we're two pawns ahead now. So you went there. Oh, you could have you could have gobbled another pawn. What about that A pawn? You want to take yeah. the A pawn? Uh, or is that I'm too greedy? I'm a bit afraid of that. The queen coming check. And that pawn getting lost. Uh, but you got the knight covering, so queen there check. That's not really a threat. You could just run down there. And his knight can't get in. Yeah, you could possibly take the A pawn. Anyway, you go there. He goes down there on your knight. You give him a check. Now, where do you reckon he should put his king? There. F8. You want to play king F8? Why do you want to play king F8? Because um, if he moves there, then I just check and I, and he has to. Yeah, yeah. king f8 is probably the go, but Daniel made a mistake and moved his king to h7, so now you can do the big swap off. So you're two, two pawns ahead and you swapped off the queens, so it's looking really good. But we could be in for a few surprises yet, let's have a look. Should just be easy money for those two extra pass pawns. So you're improving the position of your king, that's okay. Um, knight there, maybe. What what else could you do? Um, pawn to h4. Why does your pawn want to go to h4? Well, to stop his pawn moving up anymore. But it's, it's not going anywhere, is it? I mean, where's where's that h pawn going? Um, it's it's nowhere. It's blocked. Or your king can just run across, across and gobble it. So in positions like this, you have to say. Where am I going to win? Where have I got my advantage? So where's, where's your advantage in this position? The two pawns. The two pawns. So what should you do? Um. Push them. Can you play C4, get them rolling. You've got the two pawns side by side, helping each other go forwards. So something like C4, would be a little bit more accurate. Anyway, we're trying to swap the horses, and he's not cooperating. We've got this pass pawn. He's attacking our horse. We're going back. Oh, we're one square away from queening. Okay. Now, ah, wait, wait. Michael played a tricky move here. So I want you guys to type in what you think white should play here. White to play. He's two pawns ahead. He's got a pawn away from queening. So what should white play here? So people are saying c4. Sam's going knight takes f5, which is quite tricky. Anyone else? Daniel's going c4. Given he's going c4, I think. Thomas has gone d8 equals queen. That's pretty mm -hmm. sneaky. Do you remember what move you did? D8. D8 equals queen. All right. Why do you want to go d8 queen and lose your queen? Um. I just didn't see the... You didn't see the board. check? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> so, again, once you've decided on your move, you should check it. So, now I want you to find me a really good move that finishes the game straight away now. One move deep. Find me a killer move. Knight takes... F5? Yeah. No. I've got something even more killerish than knight takes F5. Um, Don't you want to get that pawn through to a queen? Yeah. How, how can you do it without him forking you? Um, maybe it's maybe king. Yes. Maybe. Why don't we just play king here, and then he can't stop the queen? Uh, End of game. 
See? See how easy it is? It's one move deep, but, but you missed it. So you went for the sneaky move. That's a big deal. I mean, you've, you've still got your pawn. And he's been very nice and swapped off into a king and pawn ending. So hopefully we're going to win the race. Let's see how we go. I did. Uh, don't, don't give away the plot. Could be exciting. Oh, it's nip and tuck. He's got a pass pawn too. Right, okay, so you queen first, and he's two squares away from queening. Yeah. What do you reckon you should do here? Just take the pawn. Take the, what do you want to take the pawn? Isn't the, isn't the queen bigger than the pawn? No, but then you can get your other pawn through, and that pawn's almost... But pawn. hang on, hang on, hang on. So you want to play queen takes pawn. Yeah. So deliberately giving up your queen for a pawn that's not even one square away from queening, it's two squares away. Couldn't you just wait? Like, instead, couldn't you just say, take his pawn? Yeah. Then if he goes up there, uh, yeah, you, you could just, or well, you could just, no, yeah. you could just block it. Oh, yeah. So like there, and it's going to take him another two goes to get down there. So in the meantime, you're hooning up here. So you've gained like about three moves on what you did. So you made a really weird move. But you've still got an easy win. That's the good news. But the bad news I is blundered. you're blundered. Now, hang on, we get to this position. I should have gone king to c You just play six. king to c6. <coughs> Keep his king out and you win. <coughs> but you didn't. So what, what happened? You're moving too fast or? Um, yeah, probably. Probably moving too fast. Okay. And so tragedy of tragedies. Daniel snuck in there and got in the corner, and we had a draw. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. So you're a bit stiff there. You should have won, I think. Yeah. It was exciting in the middle. All right, so what can we learn from that game, do you think? Um, you made a don't move too fast. Don't maybe. move too fast. Look. Look, look, look for other moves, and before you make your move, maybe look around and just check it and see if there's a surprise moves or a better move. Like you missed that queen c6. And you missed the knight fork when you made the pawn into a queen. Yeah. Things like that. Um, and the opening, we were a pawn down, weren't we? But we got it back uh, eventually. So that was okay. So, you know, a pretty, pretty reasonable sort of a game. But in both those games, you didn't make too many big boo-boos. It's more like little boo-boos, making the second best move or missing a better chance. So just take a little bit more time, consider the other moves, and you'll be right. You got much chess tournaments coming up soon? You, you, did you make um, the Ardo Shield finals or the Inter? Yeah. So you'll be yeah. playing in that. Well, what about the Inter School? Are your team in the Inter School finals? We don't have a team. You don't have a team. Oh, that's no good. Yeah. Anyway, well, hopefully you can do well on the RJ. All right. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Michael, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. And I'll see you all next Thursday. Good night. The 